And with that, I, I, I wanted to, you know, Tim, I, I watched this movie um, and, you know, I, I, at first I'm like, I, I honestly went in kind of blind. I knew about the wildfires, but I didn't really know about the rest of the film. And so I'm watching this and I'm, I'm like, you know, my heart is starting to go out for Stan, the character that you're, you're playing. Because this is an extremely difficult role and hats off to you because I thought you did such a terrific job. Mm. And I wanted to know, you get the script, um, it kind of came to you a little bit late. Somebody else was supposed to play the role and you, you get it. What was your initial reaction? So my initial reaction was, um, and for folks who haven't seen it, it deals with an incredibly challenging uh, subject area, um, yeah. which was uh, frankly a little terrifying. Yeah. Um, and the, but also as an actor, that's kind of great. You know, that's when you know you're not just going to phone something in. You're like you're in new territory and it's scary. And I often think that's a yeah. really good sign. For sure. I, I also responded because I thought the script was compelling. I didn't know where it was going. Uh, I think, like you just mentioned, it takes a sharp turn that surprises you. Um, and that was really interesting to me. But as you said, it was, you know, I think I read the script and the next morning I was on a, I'm, I live in upstate New York, so it's yeah. a series of three flights um, to get to Peachland in, in BC. Um, and uh, it was crazy and fast. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can imagine. And then once you started to develop him and get to know Stan a little bit better, I wanted to know if you had any time to do any kind of research to, for people who, you know, have been through this or psychologically how you get through a role like this, you know? Yeah, um, I have a good, good friend who is a, a really great uh, psychiatrist in uh, Austin, Texas. Mm. And I called him and I said, help me. Because, you know, you, you want to honor these people. Right. You, wanna, you don't want to be uh, cartoonish or characterish. I mean, you know, you, you, you want to be honorable about it. Um, and... Uh, the the suffering seems real to me and um you know part of what you do as an actor is you work with your imagination and try and imagine what certain things would feel like but i was able to do some of that i actually uh not right away but later met the actual man i played who it's based on a real thing so yes that was kind of fascinating but also the director grew up um best friends with the the son of the man the story's about. So he really knew him and was able to talk to me and had done extensive research. Um, and frankly, as as you, you probably noticed, that the depth of emotional kind of pain the guy goes into. Yeah. Um, I didn't have any ability to sort of judge whether I was being completely over the top or not or and you have to really trust a director to mm -hmm. to to guide you because if i'm trying to keep an eye on that i can't do both jobs at the same time so no of course yeah no 100 percent. of course you have to direct you know andrew he's such a great director i mean his first film like you know what, what was it norwegian or something like, the, it, like it wasn't even in english it it he's so they, I, the other that I get to this Peachland place, right? Yeah. And I had not seen Andrew's first movie, Violent, at that point. And I get there and I meet Andrew, who's a young man. And then I meet one of the producers who's his brother. Yeah. And then I meet the, the director of photography, who's a good friend of his, and the production designer who's in a band. And I thought, oh, God, <laughs> this is going to be terrible. <laughs> this is like a some weird group of friends and we're I'm making this movie about this crazy but they're all kind of geniuses. I mean right. that's the that's the thing I eventually got to. Yeah. Panic moment and and now I mean I'd go anywhere ever for no money for anything to work with any of them again. It's yeah. Extraordinary. Yeah, what well, I was going to say, what what an experience that ha this had to have been for you. And when when you start to get to know this character a little bit better and and everything, I mean, ultimately, this story 
it's not just about what he did. It's not just about the fires. I mean, there's a lot going on in this in this film. He's got a lot, the weight of the world on his shoulders, pretty much when you think about it. But you think about his family and his wife. And that's, to me, a big part of this story. Because God forbid if something like that had happened to me, I would have been like, there's the door and close it real fast. Have a nice life. Yeah, I think that the story of the wife is really where a lot of the dramatic tension is carried in this thing. What is she going to do? And I actually have a friend in real life who went through a very similar situation and decided I'm going to stay. I'm going to do this. And I think Chayla Horstel does an incredible job uh, playing Gail, who's my character's wife. And, yeah. and Chayla actually was the one who told them to hire me. So I'm, I'm grateful to her on that. Uh, were, were you friends or did she just know you from, from acting or? Chayla and I did a TV series in Calgary called Hell on Wheels that was right. a Western. Um, and weirdly, we were talking the other day and we, we both realized we'd never acted together, I don't think. We might have had some scene, we never said anything to each other. I, I don't remember, but we, we never had anything. And then this one, we had a ton. And yeah. she was also doing Man of High, Man in High Castle. Man in the High Castle, great show, wow. At the same yeah. time, and was going back, it was so crazy, it was the craziest, thank God Andrew and those guys are as good as they are. And had uh, got it all together, you know, and, yeah. and kept it, kept yeah. going. Yeah, it's, it's uh, wow. It's, it, it is a really riveting film and it, it has a lot to say. Uh, there's a scene that you, that you have in this film, Tim, that I can't get the images out of my head. You're mm. probably going to know what I'm talking about. When he runs to the forest and you're, you know, you're almost tripping down and then you kind of cover yourself in ash and you're just so vulnerable. Like, I mean, how did you get through something like that? Where do you, where do you go as an actor to play, to do something like that? Um, oof. you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to give you some answer and it's going to sound all very, but, uh, yeah. you know, we all have shame and dark stuff and sadness and terror and, uh, you know, if you concentrate on that stuff, you can, <laughs> you can bring it out. And also, you know, trying to imagine the world he's in, it just kind of came. It also is helpful that a scene like that, you know, <laughs> you're either going to go all the way to the emotions it requires, or you're going to be really, really bad. It's going <laughs> to, it's going to really stink to high heaven if you're, if you don't get there. So yeah. you kind of have to leap off the diving board. I mean, there's no, there's no way to halfway kind of do it. And again, I had to trust that Andrew would so uh, that's terrible or yeah you know. yeah yeah no no so so good at the end of the shoot or at the end you know when you would went home and you were done like the first thing you didn't want to just hug your family i think the first thing i want to do is sleep i mean it was so funny we worked so hard and there were crazy things you know this film um which takes place in a town where there are wildfires around it yes and that was that year in 2017 when a lightning storm went across BC. Mm -hmm. I think it started 160 wildfires in one night. Yeah. And so a day or two into filming, the woods just burst into flame uh, all around Peachland. And we, you know, were going up into fire zones and shooting. And, and um, we, we worked really, I mean, by the end of this movie, I remember going, like being surprised that it was over. There was sort of no way to to be clear. We were all in a kind of tunnel vision. Um, yeah. So I think I wanted to sleep and, and I, I wanted to see my family. I'm sure. To... Yeah, it makes you think about your own family, I would think, playing a role like this, playing a person who who was supported by his, his wife and everything. And it just has to make you think. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the movie in... I think the movie is largely a love story. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, there's... These folks are going through it, but it's really about how they say it. And um, also, it's maybe a long goodbye, depending on how the, the end yeah. of the movie turns out. Um, For sure. So 
thinking about all of that stuff, I missed Tom. I missed yeah. everything. Oh, I, I, I'm sure. You know, I, I, I have to tell you, like, I'm such a big fan of yours. You, you're in so many. You, you, your TV credits are insane. Like, it's so much stuff. Good on you, you know. But I have to tell you, Homeland for me was one, it's one of my top 10 film uh, shows ever. Like, I just, that show, there was one season I remember, like, when Saul was kidnapped and that whole season. Uh, anyway. Being on a show like that and working with the caliber of actors that you got to work with on that show, like talk about a gift from God, seriously. I have to tell you, we, and when that show ended, it's, it's very hard not to, it's funny, Hell on Wheels, I felt this, I, I really feel it with Ash, but yeah. also with Homeland. You just want to beg all those people to keep hiring you, you know? And it's very sad. You get very pathetic because yeah. as an actor, you don't have a steady gig, you know? And when you love people and love the work, you're crazy work. I had a scene once with uh, Mandy yeah. in the last season, actually, where yeah. um, Mandy was so good, I stopped acting. I just turned into like fanboy into some like audience member and they finished the take and I went whoa, whoa wait we gotta go. I'm so sorry we gotta go again I was totally I just was outside of it marveling what a what a gift of an actor he is to, uh, to watch and to work with and and that whole cast and the writing you know yeah, one crazy the writing. thing they they had people from the central intelligence agency who brought the writers in because they said, how do you come up with these scenarios? Which is a little frightening on some level. But, yeah. um, you know, the folks at the Central Intelligence Agency apparently were crazy about the show, which to me says they were doing something right in the writing and research that, uh, they, that it, it sparked some kind of recognition. Yeah, um, people. yeah no, the, I, I, were you happy with how it ended? Yeah, I thought it was incredible. I, you know, the, normally with the end of a series, it's a very difficult thing because people try and tie up every loose string and, yeah. and it just becomes a sort of laundry list of, uh, you know, of tying things up. They managed to do that and have 15 or 20 minutes early, um, as you may, 15 or 20 minutes left, that they just turned into this, yeah, kind of character study of of the two lead uh, actors uh, yeah. characters, and I just thought it was beautiful. I was yeah. stunned by it. I'm I'm concerned what happened to my character in that closet. With yes, the, I, I don't think there there's probably going to be a, a sequel based on him. <laughs> That's uh, too bad. <laughs> the tough situation he wound up in. He did, he did. But that, yeah, what an experience. So what's next? Like, I know you've been in Nosferatu. You've got, you know, I, I, on and on. You work with on 24, The Good Wife, like all my shows. I, all my shows that I watch. What? Like, really? Like, knock wood. You're, you're picking the good ones, Tim. So I'm doing right now a show for Netflix called Inventing Anna. It hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Uh, so that's... That's kind of the next thing. And then as we were talking about, I do a huge amount of work on the uh, climate crisis. Yes. So I'm working on that all the time. That's fantastic. Well, that's, that's top. That's really very, very important. Well, I do really appreciate your time this morning, Tim. I, I, lovely talking to you. And, you know, be, best of luck with this film because I really do hope that people, it, it'll be interesting what, like, what people take from it. At the end of the day, what do you want people to take from it, you know? Yeah. And, and I think it, it's a challenging movie, which is why I hope people will 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 do it. Yeah. Uh, it it's as you say, it's not um, it's not a Marvel comic book movie. Um, you know, I think as a what they should take away, I hope it creates conversations about human empathy. Yeah, you know, about how we care about people, about how we care about people accused of terrible things. Um, what's what's the limits of our empathy mm -hmm. um and it it anyhow yeah i don't want to say too much it's it's really deeply challenging and uh if if you're somebody who's up for a challenge i hope you'll check it out yeah absolutely listen again thank you so much for your time stay safe stay healthy keep thank indoors you. and uh we hope we'll see you again on the small screen big screen 
We'll be seeing you for a long time. I, I know. Bless you. Sure. <laughs> great, great to day. meet you. Thank you. You too, you Tim. Too. Bye Take bye. care. Bye.